Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hello everyone, B1B Flyer here, and I'm going to tell you why basing textures are awesome. At least that's what I think. The reason is, they make your miniatures look better, and it's easy once you get the hang of it and you know how to work with it. This is a product from Vallejo, it's called White Pumice, it's basically a white titanium white paint with some pumice grains and I think there's a bit of a kind of a similarly latex type of uh, adhesive in there that kind of makes it perform the way you want it to. I'll show you how to use that in a second. The end result is something like this that you can get. So what that started out as was a piece of cork and instead of leaving the texture on the the base here and using that which you can do it ends up looking similar to this kind of uh, you know, some slight variation. This has uh, PVA glue over it as well, just to seal it so that it wouldn't be absorbing. But really, you know, some of the, the surface variations still remain. If you flip cork, there usually there's two sides. There's a fine side and a coarse side. This is the other side, very similar, uh, just kind of a finer pattern. But you can take this and turn it into this simply by using this right here. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But the reason you you should consider using base basing textures and things like that, and uh, I sh at the end of the video you'll see a link to the uh, video I made showing you how to make your own do-it-yourself basing, uh, texture basing material and the variations you can do with that. But this is kind of what you see fairly often, and I've actually done a video on how to do this. this is the basic, most basic, sand desert uh, type of uh, base you can do. You can vary between using static grass here, grass tufts, or flock. But this is what you see quite a bit. You know, you lay some PVA glue down or some super glue, put some sand on it, put some some little shrubs or bushes or some flock, and call it a day. So what's what's thematically wrong with this? There's nothing wrong with it, I should say. But what what doesn't add to the realism is the fact that the sand is the original color. The it's not painted. And the grains, if you were to put a six millimeter guy standing here, this would actually be closer to like large cut gravel because the grains are so large. This is the problem we face with having 30 foot tall robots at the same scale as 28 millimeter tall people. If this was a person, this would look fine. But because it's markedly larger in the scale sense, one to, one to 285 or one to 300, if you want to use either one of those, the sand really actually kind of takes away if you notice things like that, which I'm kind of a miniatures nerd, so yeah, notice it. It doesn't make it wrong. It doesn't mean it's bad. If you do this, you, your miniatures this way and it works for you, that I'm not judging anyone that does it this way. In fact, good job for you for having your miniatures painted because I'm guilty of having ones that aren't. But if you want to take something like this and make it better or learn a different way to get something like this but make it look more realistic, then this is what I'm trying to show you. And again, in the previous video, I took a, I had a flat base, one with some sand i'd show how to do some sand dunes and i did one with some mars or martian type uh, colored paste i made the paste on the video all i did was throw a wash on this and dry brush did a few different colors on this one this one all i did was put a wash on it and dry brush one color these are a lot better looking if you ask me than this guy any day of the week and anybody that thinks differently is not wrong they're just wrong in my eyes but bases can really set off a miniature so, I mean, imagine I've got this guy, haven't done anything with him, but I'm going to use some texture paste on him because he's actually removable. He's part of a diorama, but the base, the texture basing allows me to paint a miniature first and then add later on without issues with getting the uh, miniature, the paint job wrecked or anything like that. So for instance, I'm still working on this guy. I've used that same texture base that I, I show how to made, make before, and I'm able to delicately put it down into the cracks and into the recesses and then texture it so that the miniature looks like he's standing in or on, like there's some weight to it. So it looks more realistic than standing on top of it. And there, again, this is just little things that, you know, those details that if you take a little bit of uh, time to to execute in a, in a efficient and you know knowledgeable way can really make a huge visual difference. And you can see I've missed a couple spots here and there, but that was just the first application. It doesn't take long to put this stuff down. So, and then that same color also bases, I know this isn't a Battletech miniature, but that's the same material, only I painted it brown and then washed it and dry brushed it. And you can get that, which is more of a, a mud or kind of drying, crusted, uh, wet earth, which was what I was going for. So you can see the nice thing about basing textures are options. I love having options. I like being able to get something more than once out of a, a certain product. 
Now, there, there are several company, or, uh, products, several companies that make different things. Vallejo makes a, a few different ones. This is the only one that I own, so I'm just going to do a video on that. But it is, it's, it's almost kind of like gritty toothpaste, very similar to what I talked about in the previous video. But all I do is I take a spatula. You could use an old brush if you wanted to as well. I just spread it on. It's, I mean, it's easy. Now, if you had a miniature already mounted and you painted it or unpainted, it didn't matter either way then you could use uh, the, you can push, push it down in between the, the feet of the legs, you know, hey, for instance, something like this. I will caution you with this. This material, I don't think sticks very well to plastics. You may want to put down a initial layer uh, or some spot areas of super glue and some sand, just to, it's what I would probably do, especially if you base over the edges. If you're not going over the edges, it's probably fine, but this is where you're gonna get some wear and it might start to peel back on you. I'm not saying it absolutely will, I just think that this adhesive here doesn't do as well as the uh, something that would actually bond to to plastic uh, a little bit better. So, but anyway, you can see already. I just all I did was smear this on, and we're going to get washed out with the white. But there's the texture you can see, and I just put I left a little ridge on there, and you can you can dab it down. You can you can scoop a big old rock on here. It'll take longer to dry, you know. But you can make larger structures and, and not structures but you know larger areas of, of various textures and relief if you want it to be like a you know just a little bit part of a ridge or maybe shape and you can go around the edges if you want you know and you can have this kind of a hill looking thing if you wanted to and if you don't like it you can take it away and this cleans up with water as well it's all water based so it's real easy to to undo something if you spill a little bit or you make a mistake and it gets a little bit onto your miniature that you've painted and you're all worried about it you know just to take a brush with some water on it wipe it down and let it dry come back to it you haven't ruined anything which is another nice thing about this is that it's not once and then oh crap i made a mistake and it's, it's over with again options so i'm going to leave this like this now when this dries what i'll end up doing is priming it with any regular primer and i'll treat it the same way i treated this one which all i did was brown and gray paint a wash a dark wash and then dry brush with a very light, uh, almost like a cream color, some of a very, very light beige. But that's it, it's simple. You know, you can do the, that kind of process if you're leaving your miniatures on the base like this and you wanna add something, you can take that paste and build it up a little bit. So again, it looks like the miniature is standing in some dirt that had a little bit of give in it. All these things add to the total realism and make those bases really complement whatever you've done to your miniature, which is the focus. So. Uh, something else real quick I will add because I wish I would have had these a while ago. So you can get flat metal ones from Ironwood Metals. You can order them. However, someone asked me why would I want to take the plastic bases off of these miniatures. Some of them, you know, alignment thing. But really, these are great if you want to do pavement, roads, um, still water, things like that. And the reason is they're almost perfectly flat. Once you scrape this down, you can take a sand. I'd used a uh, emery board or some sandpaper or anything you really want to, to get it smooth. Uh, and then you've got a smooth surface. So for instance, when I did this guy, this base is metal. I had to fill it, get it smooth, sand it down, drill the hole and all that. So I could have just started with that, which would have been a lot easier than you know two holes in there, a little bit of grit and, and craters, and then I'd have been done. So I spent a lot less, uh, would have spent a lot less time on that base doing, starting with this. So just keep that in mind that, you know, you may want these bases for a different project it doesn't mean that you can't use them for the miniatures that they're already on obviously but you know i like to find different things and different uses for some of these brand new fangled uh, plastic miniatures we got as well as the associated plastic bases which you know you can get other ones from from reaper i believe and uh, and some other companies they're out, they're out there they're available um the uh there's mdf ones as well which is good for the basing material that i showed you as well as this because it's a water-based glue it's going to go into those porous uh, surfaces and it's definitely going to adhere, adhere much better uh, again it'll stick to plastic it's just not something you're going to sit and want to pick at or fidget with it's not just not as robust but uh, the when this dries however it will be slightly it will have some give to it um, so especially any of the areas that are built up uh, a little bit thicker it's not uh, it's nothing that you'll ever probably have any issue with just be aware that it's kind of I guess it stays maybe semi flexible which is a good thing again if it, if it gets you know dropped or whatever not so much for the miniature itself but uh, you know just to let you know that it's not gonna dry rock hard like the the texture basing material I showed you how to make using spackle which and PVA which is 
really what, what got me with these. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching. Follow us on Camo Specs Online on Facebook. Leave your comments and questions down below, and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.